Now, we will attempt to find the solution to weekly math challenge 26, but beforehand, I have to recognize these two people, Eric Hobb and Kyren Swan, who are the first two people to solve this question by working together, and their answer of 32 is correct. Huge congratulations to both of them. Now, I cut out some parts of this question, so let me explain what the question is to begin with. We have n people, we have n people sitting on a regular n gone. So for example, let's examine hexagon. So let's say we have a hexagon, so regular hexagon in this case, and we have vertices labeled from 1 to 6, 5 and 6. And starting out, every single person is sitting down. So person on seat 1 is sitting down, person on seat 2 is sitting down, person on seat 3 is sitting down, seat 4 is sitting down, seat 5 is sitting down, and seat 6 is sitting down. And we play a game. Starting with person 1, we're going to go around, we're going to go around counterclockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and each person gets a turn. And when it is a person's turn, when it is person number something's turn, so if it's person number 1's turn or 2's turn, all the way to person number n's turn, they get to either change their position, so change the position or stay with the same position, so they have two choices. Uh, so they can either, if they are sitting down, they can choose to stand up or stay sitting down. And if they are standing up to begin with, they can decide to sit down or stay standing up. And a major point is, if someone changes, if someone changes, so if someone goes from sitting down to standing up or vice versa, the people adjacent or right next to them people right next to them have to change simultaneously at the same time. So, for example, let's say the person number 1 decides to stand up, so changes position to standing up. So if person 1 stands up at the same time, person 2 and person 6 are going to change their positions as well. So both of them are now going to go standing up. And now it's a person 2's turn, we're going around the clock. And now person 2 either gets to stay, with the same position or changes position. If person 2 changes his position, so let's say sits back down, sits back down, then person 1 is going to change his or her position, and person 3 is going to change his or her position as well. And now it's person 3's turn, he or she may decide to stay the same, then nothing happens, then we go to person 4. Then this repeats all the way until we finish with person 6. And we wish to find the probability that all people will be standing up immediately after the person on the last vertex n makes his or her decision. So everyone starts out sitting down, we want to find the probability that every single person is standing up. And we're going to want to find the summation from n equals to 3, so from a equilateral triangle to regular 2018 gone of 2 to the n's p of n. And we wish to find the last three digits of t. So let's, let's try to think about this. And one shape that may be very beneficial is hexagon. If you're looking at regular hexagon, maybe this problem is going to be easier to discuss as we are about to find out. So let's, let's think of, let's draw out a regular hexagon. And let me label this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we know every single person starts out sitting down. So every single person starts out sitting down. So we will examine two cases. One where one changes, so the person one changes, so that's the person one changes, or person one is going to stay the same. Person one stays the same, because these are the only two possibilities. So let's examine the first possibility. Person one is going to change. How can this happen? Well, there are two ways. If you want person 1 to change, 1 can either stand up, 1 can stand up, and 2 and 6 can just do nothing, 2 and 6 can stay the same, or 1 can stand up, then 2 can stand up to make 1 go sit back down, then 6 can stand up to make 1 sit back up once again. So there are two cases for the first one, where 1 changes and 2 and 6 stays the same, that's one case, that's case 1. Or case 2 is when 1, 2, and 6 all changes. 1, 2, and 6 changes. 1 stands up, 
two makes one sits back down and six makes one stand back up. So we will have to examine these two cases separately. So let's start with case one. So let's examine case one. Both of them are interesting to examine. So let me erase this really quickly. So erase all of this. And we know everyone is sitting down. So we know for case one, person one is going to change. So let me write C for change and S for staying the same. So we know person one is going to change and person two and person six are going to stay the same. So person one is going to stand up and we know person two is not going to change his, but as soon as person one stands up, person two and person six are changing their positions as well simultaneously. So we gotta keep that in mind. Now it's a person two's turn and we're examining case one. So person two is going to stay the same. How about person three? Well, if person three stands up, then person two has to sit back down. That's not allowed. So person three has to stay the same. Now, what about person four? Well, if person four does not change, then there's no way to make person three sit up. So person four has to change. It has to change to make person three stand up. So person four is going to change. So person three is going to stand up. Person four is going to stand up. And person five, because it's next to four, is going to stand up. And person five cannot change because that's going to make person four sit back down. So we know person five is going to stay the same. And here we have it. This is one possibility. Person one is, person one changes, person four changes, and everyone else stay the same. Now, before I get to the case where one, two, and six all changes, let me address this case first. So just to make sure we're not confused, there are two major cases we have to look at where person one changes or person one stays the same. And the case where person one changes can be broken down into two more cases, case one and case two. And we have already shown a combination for case one. Now let me focus on this case instead of going on to sub case two, because this case and the case we just examined have a very close relationship. So let me erase some of these. Let's go back. So everyone is sitting back down. So let me examine the case where person one stays the same before I address the case where one, two, and six all change. So if person one stays the same, that means either person two has to stand up or person six has to stand up to make one stand up. So let's say person two changes. So person two is the person to change. Then person six has to stay the same because if person six changes as well, then one is going to sit up, then sit back down. That's not allowed. So we know person two is going to change. So person one is sitting up. Person two is sitting up, standing up, I should say, <laughs> to avoid confusion. And person three is going to stand up as well. Stand up as well. And now person three cannot change his, change his position because if person three changes his position, person two is going to sit back down. So we're go, we are having the same case. Person three has to stay, then person four has to stay the same as well because changing is going to make person three sit back down. So it stays the same. And now person five standing up, changing is going to allow five, six, and four to all stand up and everybody is standing up at the end. And you see how this is the symmetric case that we examined. Remember, we, we started out with the case where change, change, and everybody else staying worked out. Now we have a case where these two people are changing and other people are staying the same. And by symmetry, if we had instead of person two changing and person six staying the same, if we had a person six changing and person two staying the same, we're going to have another symmetry case. We're going to have a case, in fact, for this one, I encourage you to try it out, where person six and three are standing up and everyone else is staying the same. So we have already found three cases where person one and person four are changing and everybody is staying the same, and where person two and person five are changing and everybody else is staying the same. And the case, and the case in which six and three are standing up and everybody else is staying the same. So we have found the three cases so far. So let's see if we can find one more case by examining this case where one, two, and six all change. So for case, so for case two, let me just draw a new hexagon. So we know case two is where one, two, and six all change. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we know one, two, and six are all going to change. 
and let's see if this thing is going to get us another solution, if this thing is going to be allowed. So, we know 1 changes, so 1 stands up, making 2 and 6 stand up as well. So 2 and 6 are going to stand up, stand up, and now 2 has to change. So we'll look examining the case where 2 changes. So 2 sits back down, making 1 sit back down, making 1 sit back down, and making 3 stand up. And now, what has to happen to 3? Well, 3 has to help 2 stand up. So 3 has to change to make 2 stand up. So 3 is going to change. 2 stands up. 3 sits back down. And maybe you're seeing a pattern. 3 sits back down. And 4 is going to stand up. Now what? Now we have the same case. 4 has to change to make 3 stand back up. So 4 is going to change, sitting back down. Sitting back down. And that's going to make 3 stand back up as we need. So this is basically the same thing that happened, just with 2 and 3. And we know that's going to make 5 change as well. And now it's 5's turn, and 5 has to change to make 4 stand back up. And that's going to allow 4 to stand back up. 4 to stand back up. And 5 sits back down. 5 sits back down. 5 sits back down. And 6, six is going to sit back down. And when 6 changes, 6 is going to stand up, 5 is going to stand up, 1 is going to stand up, and everything is fine. So we know the case where every single person changes, where everyone changes, also works. So what have we found? What have we found for hexagon at the list? So we haven't proven the general case yet, but for hexagon, we have 4 cases. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can either have 1 and 4 changing, that's one case. We can have 2 and 5 changing, that's another case. We can have 3 and 6 changing, that's another case. Or we can have every single person changing. So we have 4 cases. We have 4 cases. One case where everyone, everyone changes. Everyone changes. And we have 3 cases that seems to be related. 1 and 4 changing, 2 and 5 changing, and 3 and 6 changing. Now, is this going to work for every single every single polygon? Is this going to work for 7-sided polygon or 8-sided polygon or 9-sided polygon? Well, let's examine let's examine the square. 4-sided polygon, so this this was 6, now it's 4. So now we have 4 people. Now, is every single person standing up is going to work in this case? Yes, because if every single person if every single person changes, if every single person changes, let's just look at this from point of view of any any person inside the square. Let's, let's focus on 2. We know 2 is going to change, 1 is going to change, and 3 is going to change, and 4 is going to change. So if you're focusing on 2, 2 is going to change 3 times. It's going to change 3 times. Once because it once because it is deciding to change itself, and twice because the people adjacent to it is changing. And if you change three times, you're going to come back to where you are. And that applies to every single person, so everyone changes. The case where everyone changing works out for four-sided polygon, and in fact, this argument can be extended. So the case, so one case where everyone changes works for all n. It doesn't matter how many sides you have. See, because, if, because if everyone changes, each person is going to experience change three times. Once because of themselves, and twice because of the adjacent people. So we know this case is going to work, but how about this case, where we can group them 1, 4, 2, 5, and 3, 6? Well, that does not work on this square. Because 1, 4, 2, 5, and 3, 6 changing, this depended on our value of n being a multiple of 3 multiple of 3 and this becomes more apparent when we examine nine sided polygon so let me let me do so so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 in this case we can make a similar cases as 1 4 2 5 and 3 6 we can have 1 4 and 7 standing up to make 8 and 6 stand up 9 and 2 stand up and 3 and 5 stand up we can have instead of 1 4 and 7 we can have 2 5 and 8 standing up or we can have 3, 6, and 1, no, 3, 6, and 9 standing up exclusively to make every single person stand up because we need these groups of 3 to make this work out. So these three cases, these three cases only work, only work when n is multiple of 3. So we have found something very important. 
for any n, we have one case. And for the n's where n is multiple of 3, we have 3 extra cases along with this one. So, since we know this, now we can find our answer. We wish to find the summation from n equals to 3 to 2018 of 2 to the n p of n. And we know p of n is the probability. And how do you calculate probability? Well, it's the number that we want. And we just we know about the number that we want. We know that number that we want is going to be 1 for n not being multiple of 3. And we know the number that we want is going to be 4 for n being multiple of 3. Okay, so the number that we want we can determine and we are going to divide by the total number of outcomes. And what's total number of outcomes in this case? Well, each person has two choices. One has two choices, two has two choices, all the way to the nth people, nth person. So the total number of choices is going to be 2 multiplied n times, or 2 to the n. So in fact, this, this summation simplifies, this summation simplifies to summation from n equals to 3 to 2018 of 2 to the n times the number that we want over 2 to the n because there are 2 to the n possibilities and 2 to the n cancel out. So we simply want to find sum from n equals to 3 to 2018 of the number that we want, number that we want, and we know this number that we want is 1 for all n, for all n and for multiples of 3 when n is multiple of 3 when n, so for all n, and when n is multiple of 3, then we are going to count 3 extra cases, so to, for a total of 4. So, since we have 1 for all n, we know we are going to have, how many numbers are there from 2018 to 3? Well, there are 2018 minus 3 plus 1, or 2016 numbers, so we are counting 1 26 times, and in the, if you're not seeing how, why I'm doing plus 1, Think about this. How many numbers are there between 1 and 10? Well, that's going to be 10 minus 1 plus 1. So you have to add this plus 1 to account for the one of the end points that you left out. So we get 26, 10. And for every single multiple of 3, so for the every single multiple of 3, we got to count 3 extra. And how many multiples of 3 are there between 3 and 2018? Well, we're going from n equals to 3, which is 3 times 1 all the way to 2018, and 2018 is not a multiple of 3, but 2016 is, and 2016 is 3 times, 3 times 672. So we're going from 3 times 1 to 3 times 672, so there's 672 multiples of 3. So what's our answer? Our answer is 2016 plus, multiplying this out, gets you, Get you 2016 once again. So our final answer is 4032. And the last three digits of T is 32.